Before we get into today's portion of the build, I want to say we're only 13 subscribers from that magical milestone of 100 subscribers. I know it's small by YouTube standards, but a milestone nonetheless. So go ahead and hit subscribe so we can get to that milestone. And at the end of the build portion of this video, I'll tell you exactly what we're going to do to commemorate that 100 subscribers. And uh, if you're watching this, if you're already a subscriber or a new subscriber, go ahead and post in the comments below where you're watching this video from because I'm curious to see where I'm reaching. All right, so I finished the new head uh, headstock end blank uh, yesterday. Got it squared up and finished. Well, you might be wondering why I'm building a new headstock blank. So in case you missed the last episode, Last night's CNC adventure was a total catastrophe. But the neck evidently came loose from the bed. The bit passed into this taller part here. It uh, jammed itself up and snapped the bit. Just snapped it in two, rebuild this piece. And now I redesigned the headstock and the headstock uh, template. I'm getting ready to cut it out on the laser right now. So here is the Alignment template. That's the new headstock. So here it is, let me shut the laser off and the other noise. Drop that. So I've got the center point alignments here. I just want to get those lined up with where the nut is projected to be and then I got my center points. Okay, and then this is where I'm going to align the tool to with every one of my processes. And then that gets cut out. And here we go with the second round on the CNC machine. First thing I did was uh, cut out the, the holes for the tuning pegs. This video is sped up. And we're looking at the neck from the back side. Then I went and cut out the profile. Now this is the actual speed of the machine. Taking off little bits as we go through with each layer. Now we're thinning it down to its final thickness, little bit by little bit. The point at the top of the carve there is something called a volute. It first showed up on Martin guitars as a way to add material to the, to the back of the neck joint and uh, therefore give it more strength because the truss rod also runs through there, which takes away more material from, from the inside. But uh, it, it's actually turned out to be more uh, decorative or for style nowadays. And we're going to carve that down to uh, be more of a diamond shape rather than a uh, point. Here I added blue painter's tape to the edges with the idea that it would help prevent tear out as the bit passes over the edges. 
I didn't get any tear out so maybe it worked or maybe it just didn't tear out so it was just a per it was just a precaution that I took you see this headstock gets cut down pretty thin because we're going to add a veneer to the front face of it to, to give it a little bit more thickness. This time to hold the part down to the CNC bed I used a 3M extra strength double stick tape and I could barely get the darn part off the bed. Now we're going to move on to the pearl inlay on the back. First thing I did was to mask off the entire part uh, because the process that we're going through here blows a lot of soot across the face of the, uh, of the, of the headstock and that gets so dirty and you just can't clean it up. What's going on here is I'm cutting or I'm burning out uh, a recess that's going to receive the, the pearl letters that we're going to cut out next. Now the, the, the pearl material isn't too thick, it's just under a millimeter I believe if, if my memory serves correct. I had to test out my laser settings on a scrap piece just to make sure I got the right uh, the right thickness. In fact, I think I used the the ruined piece of, of headstock that uh, that uh, was on the CNC machine last night just to get the just to get the settings right. So there's a J. Now we're working on the A. A lot of people like to watch these machines just work. So at the end of the video, I'm going to put some CNC footage on and just let it play. If you like it, then uh, go ahead and watch it and uh, enjoy it. <laughs> so there it is, the A and J burnt out. Now we're moving on to the Abalone Pearl. Really what this is, is you, you can't find a sheet of this for a piece of pearl this size in the wild. It's a lot of laminate parts of pearls. This is my first time cutting into the pearl and I don't think my laser was, was high enough powered. Uh, so I uh, was able to go ahead and punch it out, but it wasn't the cleanest, uh, the cleanest cut. And for the J, I, I boosted the power and that one worked out a lot better. Now I went ahead and uh, set it in place, fit just like a puzzle piece, stuck it in with glue. You see the silver dust around there, it's where I started sanding down the, uh, the J already, flush with, uh, with the surface of the back of the neck. And here it is, sanded with a high grit piece of sandpaper. If you're still with me, thanks for sticking through the video. Uh, now that we're at the end, I'm going to give that announcement about uh, hitting 100 subscribers. So once we hit that 100 subscribers, I'm going to debut the band that my children started. They are 7 years old and 11, and they've been taking music lessons, and they're writing songs, and I'm super proud of them. So once we hit that 100 subscribers, I'm going to debut the, uh, the video for the first song that they wrote, uh, that Bennett wrote, the 7-year-old. And you're going to be surprised that uh, it's pretty catchy. And the fact that he's seven, you're probably going to get your socks blown off. Hey, if you're staying behind to watch this video, uh, thanks a lot. I hope you enjoy just watching the machine work. The video is sped up, but uh, it's going to go around a couple times and, and show you how it cuts out the uh, the holes for the tuning pegs and the in the perimeter for the, the headstock. But since you're since you're watching, I just want to take a moment to talk about what I want from this channel. Um, so yeah, just sit back and listen, or or don't. I don't I don't really care. I do care, honestly. But uh, uh, what I want from this channel is is to to grow the subscriber base and and you know get a lot of people to be interested in what I'm doing 
and to participate in conversations and, and actually to learn something. I know that uh, me using machines like this isn't, isn't uh, what most people or, or hardly any people have in their, uh, or in their shops or even have access to. But, uh, you know, I started out with just hand tools and, and wherever possible or wherever convenient, I should say, I will show how to do like this uh, particular process with hand tools. Uh, but the, the CNC machine and the laser, and I may even get into 3D printing on this channel, uh, you know, it's just interesting to me, and I know it's interesting to a lot of other people. So that's kind of, it's kind of where I want to focus. Um, the other thing I want to do is to grow this channel to a point where, where YouTube actually wants to pay me for people like you watching uh, the content that I produce. I don't expect to ever get rich from YouTube and I don't expect making guitars will will even be a profitable venture uh, because uh, the materials that I'm using uh, are not cheap like this is this is high quality wood you're not gonna find this kind of wood at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's um, I'm gonna pay a premium for it I'm going to pay a shipping cost for it and a lot of times I end up buying it and storing it in my garage. So it's taking up a lot of space too before I can even get to it. Uh, and the amount of time and effort and, and other money for things like tools and, and whatever, whatever else uh, expenses there are, it's just not profitable because if I spend three months, four months on a build, I put in probably close to 200 hours and once you once you charge somebody for the guitar you're building in the cost of materials and you're trying to be competitive with the fact that they could just go to the local guitar shop and uh, and buy something just as good if if I'm kinda of undercutting myself here but maybe even a little better um, <laughs> But, but this is custom, so that's what you get to charge for. But by the time I name a price for uh, the finished product that's competitive, the, the value of my labor is absolutely insignificant as far as, as cost. Um, so, you know, I might, might make two, three, four hundred dollars on a guitar. And after spending, uh, you know, two hundred hours on it, it's... Uh, it's not a very, very good return on labor. So my ultimate goal with getting YouTube monetized is for YouTube to pay me to make these guitar making videos so that I can make these guitars at least at cost and, and give them out to, to some deserving people. Uh, and if everything works out just perfectly and my channel blows up and I can make these guitars absolutely free and uh, and not not have to worry about you know charging for labor or cost of materials so that is something that I would love to have help from each and every person who ever watches my videos um, because there are a couple requirements uh, that I have to meet before YouTube considers paying me. Uh, the first requirement is I need 1,000 subscribers. Simple number. Lots of people with crappy channels have thousands of, of subscribers. The other requirement is that I have to have 4,000 total hours of, of viewed content. So the more you guys watch my stuff, then the more people go ahead and click subscribe the faster that I can get monetized and reach that goal. Um, so if you guys really want to help out, you know, click my videos, let them, let them play all the way through, you get more time watched, um, and subscribe and, and help tell your friends to subscribe. It'd be a huge help. So thank you. That would be just uh, the best way that you could help out.